Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Hilda Gloria. You can always call me Hilda Blush. I am a fashion blogger and an entrepreneur and I do love to share videos about these two topics. So if you would like to receive a notification every time that I post a video, go ahead and hit the red subscribe button down below. On this channel, I share videos about fashion, entrepreneurship and how to juggle all this with a full-time job. If you like the sound of that, Seven years ago, I went through the process of applying and actually getting a Schengen student visa to come and study in Italy. And in this video, I'm taking you through the whole process with everything updated on how you can actually get a visa to come and study in Italy. Now, these are the requirements. First of all, you need an admission letter and enrollment confirmation from your university. How do you get that? Is of course before when you do apply to do study a program in one of the universities in Italy you will be given uh, an admissions form if you've been accepted if you meet all the requirements that are needed but they do differ from university so once you get the admissions letter you will need to go through something called pre-enrollment and when you are pre-enrolling you have got different steps that you go through for example you have got to take your degree to be translated because the embassy will need to use that and it has to be certified by the ministry of foreign affairs so yes once you get that the school will enroll you as a student that they do actually accept expect to join in for example the following academic year and you will need to pay the enrollment form or the application form usually required I did pay when I was uh, coming to Milan I did pay 50 dollars for the application form and when I got admitted I was required to pay 500 dollars for proof uh, of acceptance and then that money would be given back to me or would be carried forward to my tuition, something like that. But then you have to pay a certain amount of money for you to get the enrollment letter, a letter that shows that you're actually being expected to start studying. They've offered you um, the program and you have accepted kind of thing. Number two, you need a valid passport. Um, I am Ugandan, of course, I do hold a Ugandan passport. It has to be valid and it has to have at least two blank pages. Of course, where they'll put the visa. Number three is the visa application form. Now, where do you get the visa application form? Go to their website. Usually it is called um, the Embassy of Italy in, for example, Kampala, where I come from, or the Embassy of Italy in, I would say, Sudan. And then you are going to find the different application forms. Now, make sure you do select the one that says student because the requirements for the different types of visas differ so you have to apply for a student visa not anything else there are different types as well like tourism visits family affairs and a lot of things but all you need is to get the student uh, application form i'll put a screenshot here of what it looks like and of course you are going to fill everything in as required Next requirement is you need a, a passport sized photographs with a blank or white background behind you and your ears have to be shown. So if you've got small ears like myself, you need to make sure that there's something behind so that your ears can be seen. So yes, they have to be two that you have to hand in and you don't have to have crazy hair apparently. You're, you just have to be yourself, like literally. Be yourself, no Photoshop, no nothing. You just want to see the real you like for identity purposes. I have a friend who was sent back because he took his photograph in one of the Photoshop studios and his passport photographs were rejected and he had to take one right at the embassy so be very careful no Photoshop is needed they want to see who you are as who you are that's it next is an itinerary or an air ticket you have got to show proof that you have bought an air ticket or you've booked with a certain airlines usually you can get the booking even without paying um, if you have for example your uh, appointment your embassy or your visa appointment tomorrow you can book one tonight and the airlines will keep it for about two days 
I did that with Turkish Airways and it was really easy. It was free. I didn't have to pay anything. In case I didn't get the visa, I didn't have to lose the money. So do not pay your air ticket before you actually get the visa. Next is medical insurance. Now medical insurance is uh, usually got from the embassy or you can ask the embassy for advice. Usually they've got their special people that handle this or they know a company that does handle this. I paid $50 for it then you need financial proof now I find this ridiculously not <laughs> realistic especially for a student usually as a student you don't have that much money but they need you to have at least 6,000 euros on your account to show that you can actually live on that and that is like the annual fee not the monthly fee the monthly fee is around 350 euros per month or 400 euros per month if I'm not uh, mistaken the 6,000 is for the whole um, the whole year but you need to have that on your account also you need to get that money on your account because once you arrive in Italy you will go to a place called Questura meaning police where you will have to get a residence permit now that you've arrived and you will still need to show that amount of money on your account so what I did I didn't have that money of course I didn't have any money <laughs> at the time as a student I asked my parents to lend me the money and I kept it on my bank account and when I was done with the entire process I sent back the money so if you have somebody that can lend you the money you can do the same and send it back to them because it is unrealistic but if you have it on your account good for you they do ask for language proficiency depending on your program now my program was supposed to be in english you can have these courses done at the british council in your country or in your city you can always ask them uh, they do have centers all over the world or you could easily go to toffel.com or ilets.com and look for your nearest location and they will tell you about the payments I think mine costed about $150 but that was like seven or eight years ago and it could have changed. I'm going to find everything and link them down below for you guys in case you need them. If you are really looking for this information go and check them down below. If you are going to do your program in Italian you won't need any language proficiency. I'm not sure if there are any courses offered in French or any other language. I know it's English and Italian so if your course is going to be in Italian you won't need any of these. You will just need a certificate to show that you are proficient in Italian and it's usually from a language school that gives these lessons. Ask the embassy. They usually have an officer related to like education or dedicated to like students for advice to help you where to get all these things from they will give you all the info that you actually need the last requirement is accommodation and you cannot get a visa if you cannot show proof of where you're going to stay especially the address now you can get accommodation online I'm going to link a few websites that you can use to get accommodation or you can use to book accommodation while you are abroad they don't need they don't charge you any extra fees but there are also agencies that do the job and will charge you um, a fee I'm going to link those down below where you can just get in touch with the landlord and it's safe you can pay and have the place guaranteed for you when you arrive I'm going to link them down below and those that are suitable for students but my advice is when you are checking on the sites be very sure and do not book in the city center and do not book very close to the universities I know it is you know important to live not far away from the university but I would suggest that you live a little bit outside the city center or a little bit outside uh, from the university but then have got a public means to get to your point of interest because that is way cheaper than actually living very close to the university or in the city center. In Milan, on average, a shared room in the city center is about 500 euros, which was so expensive for me. I don't know about you guys, but I would suggest um, living outside because outside is like 350, 400 euros for a single room where you can live and have your own space. Um, that is up to you for you to decide, but I would suggest that you live a little bit far away from the university or a little bit far away from the city center. There is public transportation, you don't have to worry about a thing, you'll get to your destination on time. And that's the last requirement. It brings me to the end of this video. If you found this video very helpful, please give it a like, share it with your friends, leave me a comment. If you'd like to know about uh, certain information, I'll link my email down below in the description box. You can write to me about any questions 
questions regarding this if you'd like to request any specific video i'm more than happy to do it let me know in the comment section have you studied abroad how was the visa process or would you plan to study abroad let me know in the comment section i'd like to hear from you see you in the next one bye